Hi, my name is Sean McMain, and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Dev. Today's question comes from Oliver. Oliver asks, what do devs need to know about the Apple TV? Well, Oliver, there are two main ways that Apple has provided of creating apps for the Apple TV. The first of those is called TVML. TVML is an HTML-based system that's used on the old Apple TV. It has templates for common content layouts, and if you're doing content delivery, it's a good way to go. But if you are an iOS developer and know that system already, it's probably best to avoid this. The second approach we have available is based on UIKit. If you're used to iOS or Mac dev, this is really the way to go. It uses auto layout and all of your old favorites, UI button, UI text field, etc. But they've been tweaked to work with tvOS and the new Siri remote. This system also provides many familiar APIs. Core Bluetooth is available for connecting to external devices. AV Kit is present for playing video content, which is important on TVs. And Apple's whole suite of game technologies is available on this platform as well. If you want to see the whole list of available APIs, you can do so on Apple's developer site. By using these common APIs and user interface elements, it becomes pretty straightforward to reuse a ton of code across TV, OS, and iOS, and even some on the Mac. Another question we face on the Apple TV is how do we interact with it? There's no mouse, there's no touch screen. What do we do? Well, Apple has introduced what they call the Focus Engine, which is a system for interacting with the on-screen content using the Siri remote or game controllers. The way it works is it highlights a single item on screen and allows the user to move among the items with the Siri remote's trackpad or with a game controller. Apple's done much of the work for us with the common UI elements. Broadly, what we need to take care of is telling the system which items are eligible for focus, and if we want to do something special with the animations, what the animation should be as an item comes into or comes out of focus. There's also a little bit of extra work around some of the more complex container elements like table views and collection views. But for the most part, this is all easy stuff and you'll have no trouble with it. Another thing that as developers we'll be needing to think about is the parallax art. The tvOS system uses a lovely subtle parallax effect on lots of the user interface elements. To support this effect, images have to be stored in a special format that splits a graphic into up to five layers. Apple's provided a preview app, as well as tools within Xcode, that allows us to create the special image files necessary for these parallaxed images. On the programmer side, UI Image and UI Image View automatically support the new format and provide these parallax effects once your graphics created without any extra effort on our behalf. We also have to consider storage limits. Downloads for the Apple TV can only be 200 megabytes. Anything beyond that must be downloaded using Apple's on-demand resources infrastructure. There's also no local storage available on the device. If you have any substantial data you need to store, you'll have to use iCloud, Parse, Azure, or another cloud backend. There is one loophole there in that NS user defaults will store up to one megabyte locally. So if you have a tiny bit of data, you can store it locally there. So in summary, Apple has made it straightforward for iOS developers to move to tvOS. By making the on-ramp to this new platform so accessible to a large community of devs, and by sending out dev kits to quite a number of developers, they have ensured that the Apple TV App Store will be full of interesting things from day one. That's it for today's episode. Make sure you tweet your questions to hashtag askadev or leave them in the comments.